Alrighty. Woohoo. Okay. Let's see, here we open now. All right, we are up. Cool. Let's get our sharing out. Get the sharing going. Look at that. I just got a notification that there we're you go. live. You're live, yeah. There we go. We just popped up. I need to stop yawning. <laughs> it's a long day. I was up to 3 a.m. last night finishing up some work. <laughs> oh, do, yeah. Though. I'll be up late tonight, too, though. It'll be fun. I'm a late night owl, though. <laughs> what we do. Doing the work. Exactly. Uh, exactly. No more shares. get this into okay let me just get this feed up so I can see the comments and we'll get going all right here we go awesome all right cool all right so we did our sharing sharing is Karen everyone else out there if you want to share by all means, click a share button and uh, show us some love. Sharon is Karen. Um, I can't do a heart. Uh, that's it. That's there. it. There you go. Get the heart going. <laughs> all right. So we're back with another episode. I think we're at episode 29 tonight uh, of the uh, of the journey that started off as uh, a conversation over cigars with me and Sam. And now it's evolved into this. And tonight we got uh, our friend Caitlin Young on, formerly known as the Llama Girl. New and improved. <laughs> new and improved um the social media doctor the queen of social media um we met uh i only been in apex about a year now it's about a little bit after um, me i think i started in apex in september of last oh, year a little bit after yeah so i'm mdm's my anniversary coming up now so i'm actually just in about a year and uh yeah we connected early in the game when you joined in and uh love how present you are on social media and uh Taught us all how to do TikTok and all that good stuff. So, uh, so welcome to the show. And uh, thank you. Yeah. So let's. Uh, you have a lot going on. So you got a you got a best selling book that just went on. Uh, you're working with Iconic now. Social media games obviously blown up. Um, you got your own business going now with social media. What do you say? Six employees you got going now. Yes, I, I mean, have six employees of my own. It's been crazy even since February. Awesome. Like, That's awesome. I've just gone. That's awesome. So let's uh, let's start from the beginning. Let's start with Llama Girl, and then how the evolution happened. Because that evolution happened, I believe, the f the actual pivotal moment was down in Tampa at Stacy's event, if I remember correctly. When we were together. Um, you yes. kind of had a revelation there, and kind of uh, that was definitely an intense event. And I recommend Stacy's events for everyone out there. Uh, they're uh, they're definitely uh, it's more than just an event; it's an experience. So uh, I know it was a pivotal point for you. Uh, I know you were actually, I think, in tears over it. I think a lot of us were in tears of different stuff went on there. And uh, from that, I mean, you've blown up since that event. So that's that's great. So let's start with Llama Girl. Let's, let's, where you came from, what you're about, and how you got here. Yeah, so um, I grew up homeschooled in the little town of Lake Odessa. And basically, you know, didn't really have, a very strong purpose or anything like that. In fact, um, I struggled with self-worth since I was six. I actually didn't plan on living to my mid-20s. Like, I kind of always knew that I was going to somehow end my life before mm. I hit 25. Mm. And um, so I just kind of lived this silent struggle and didn't talk to anyone. And when I was 22, I kind of had this moment of, okay, this is it. We're done. And uh, luckily my husband listened in and knew what was going on. Um, otherwise I wouldn't be here. I had written the notes. I had said my goodbyes to my family, all those things, um, just because I did not see my own worth. I was also over a hundred pounds heavier than I am now. And I just did not live any kind of life. I was just kind of surviving. 
Well, I went to a mental institute for six weeks on and off. And, um, you know, I started putting myself back in there after I was faking it. You know, you fake to get out of there because you don't want to be there. Mm. And um, from there, I started putting myself back in. And mm -hmm. I had a moment where I was like, wait, why am I putting myself back in here if I don't want to be here? And so I had a kind of come to Jesus moment where it was like him telling me, hey, if you weren't supposed to be here, I would not have kept you here and you have a bigger purpose to live. And so that put me on my path to um, gain my mental health back into shape. So I, you know, worked on that for a year. And then the next year I got gastric sleeve surgery, lost over a hundred pounds. That's still a work in progress. Um, mm, every day the struggle is real. <laughs> oh yeah. And then, um, Last year, I was still working as a Walmart employee at this time, um, struggling with, uh, I had gotten the COVID shot and uh, it actually paralyzed one of my legs, um, had two strokes. And, Holy cow, uh, well, I didn't know that. I realized during that time off that life is short and why am I wasting my time at Walmart, right? Like there's totally. so many different things I could be doing with my life and so I uh, started putting my application out into other jobs and got an interview at this awesome insurance agency and they invested Apex into me. Wow. Well, from there, it just kind of spiraled. So I realized in Apex, I wasn't meant to be an insurance agent. I was meant for something bigger, but I didn't know what. So then I went into mindset coaching um, with Wiley MacArthur and then I got into Apex Accelerator. So Apex Accelerator is really where I started to take off more um, because I was able to lay out my Dream 25 with my group coach, Jessica Dunahy. I was able to really invest more into what my idea was of what I wanted to do. And I always knew llamas would be a part of it because I had llamas growing up. So Which is totally cool. That, right? <laughs> totally cool for a city boy. <laughs> for real. So I was dead set on that was who I was. I was the llama girl. That was it. And uh, so we get to through this, we get through different events. We go to Stacy's event in February and we're doing this breathing exercise. Like all these adults that was crazy. on the ground. That was crazy. Right? It's just the weirdest thing. Like if you were not there, you would have thought we were in like some kind of weird cult or something. Yeah. I don't know. But it was hilarious, but yeah. also super awesome. Um, I'm there laying on the ground after hearing all these speakers and I start to sit up and I just see the words like in sand almost like saying, you know, that my purpose is to unmask the hidden truths within people. And that rocked me to my core because I was like, oh, oh my gosh, this is who I am. So I was like, bawling like a baby the rest of the day like i remember I yeah just had the tears were, going on yeah and i walked up to chris whitehead i'm like i know my purpose and he's like okay okay <laughs> you know and um what also helped was i had a one-on-one -on -one call with him but to sum it up that's basically how it's it happened best. and i came to this realization that i'm so much more than just uh the llama girl or this person that did that like i am here to help people and my story is there to help that. And so I actually added a chapter to my book and launched that on March 14th, became bestseller um, on the first day. Awesome. And uh, in two different categories. And here we are, I now own a social media business because I always had a knack for it and people started reaching out to me and I was like, okay, here's my business. And then awesome. uh, I got graciously asked to be uh, part of the iconic team and so just so many different things going on and it's really exciting that's awesome that's awesome i mean i i didn't know your past history i knew you as llama girl i didn't know all the other stuff going on that's that's wild and thank you for sharing that um i, I think a lot of people struggle with um we, you know the, the suicide aspect of life when you lose your purpose and you're not really sure why you're here uh, myself um when my marriage was crashing and burning it's kind of what i was working for my whole life and all of a sudden, everything was kind of falling apart in front of me. I had a moment where I was, I had my car pinned. I was out in the back road by the beach, and I was, wasn't was coming back. And for whatever reason, something came over me, and it was really, I think, the kids. I said, I don't want to leave the kids like this. And But I was I was going. I was done. I was. I had it. Yeah. I was like, I'm done. I'm not doing this. 
And um, I had a second time when I had a big fight with the wife and um, I was like, that's it. This time it's for real. I'm, I'm not doing this anymore. And same thing. She actually blocked me from leaving the house because she, I guess, saw the look in my eye that I was crazed. And luckily she did because I'm still here to talk about it. And uh, yeah, I find I'm out that you're still here. Th this. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, it's so many, so many of us have that struggle. We haven't seen so No one talks about it. I mean, life is hard. Life can be hard. People can be mean. Life can be hard. Um, but all, life can also be awesome and people can be awesome. And it's just a matter of finding your purpose, like we talk about, right? And, and finding those people, the family of choice we talk about. I mean, you know, the, the Apex family has been, I mean, it's just amazing. The people that we meet and meeting you and, you know, halfway across the country and like, you know, not big, huge difference in age and like, just like family. It's like, cool. Like, you know, we're at these events together. Every time we all meet up, it's like, oh, a family reunion, like hang out, like exactly. see everybody, cheer everybody on. We all got cheerleaders. We all help each other. We all push each other to be better. We all inspire each other. Fire starts fire. I mean, it's just it's just so awesome. Um, but uh, it is. the message is out there. If anyone's struggling, um, don't give up. Um, as bad as it seems, there's brighter days ahead. The sun will rise tomorrow. We ride at dawn again tomorrow morning. Um, I'm sure you'd be happy to talk to anybody. I'd be happy to talk to anybody. If you're if you're struggling in life and you're you don't want to do it anymore, reach out to us. No judgment. No yeah. nothing. We've been there um exactly it's uh you know i think a lot of times you just need someone to talk to and, and just to sort things out and um i know covid threw a lot of people for a loop and really upset their system and their their game and their jobs and their careers and their families and everything else and um you know it's a problem struggle to weight too i was 305 pounds um i got down to 222 was my lowest um uh, probably about 245 right now i'm not happy about it i gotta get back on my game um just uh you know life hey, you and me and both. It's, it's just a, <laughs> the struggle is real you know as soon as you take your foot off the gas you just all of a sudden starts creeping up and you're like all right let's get back on the grilled chicken and uh, veggies <laughs> but um yeah, we know how to do it it's you know it's a it's a it's a choice we make every day when you know, we get out of bed is it are we going to eat grilled chicken today we're going to go get you know chicken parmesan today you know it's uh you know mm -hmm. the struggle is real you know so uh you know i say it all the time sometimes people feel and i know myself you felt like you were alone on an island I'm the only one in this situation. I'm the only one struggling with this. You realize that most of the world's struggling with the same things. Everyone's struggling with weight. Everyone's struggling with addictions. Weight is an addiction. You know, whether it's alcohol addiction, drug addiction, sex addictions, all these other addictions out there. Weight is an addiction. I'm addicted to eating. Mm -hmm. I know it. You know, I, 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 same. you know, I eat when I'm happy. I eat when I'm sad. I eat when I eat, you know, it's an addiction. So, um, you know, so it's, there's no shame in it. Talk to people about it and, you know, and then get a support group. Um, you know, the support group that we have here, this network, you know, like I said, you're feeling down and someone shoots me a message. Hey, you seem a little down today. You good? And I'm like, I was a little down, but because you reached out, I'm good. So that's how important yeah. it is to reach out to people too. And the other, in the, you know, the giving side of it, you know, our, our brother, Chris, uh, go givers, um, you know, like when someone shows up in your feed and, uh, you know, just for some reason, reach out and say good morning, say hello, say, Hey, you good. If someone looks a little down, give them a little pep talk and make them smile, you know? But uh, that just, exactly. that's so awesome uh, hearing your story. And I didn't actually know your, your full backstory. And that's that's just wild to, to see where you are now. And I mean, you're to me, you're happy, go lucky, you know, always <laughs> bubbly. Like I never would think that you were down and, you know, depressed in that point. And it's just you did a full 360. And that's awesome. So I congratulate on you on that. You're always entertaining us on social media and all you just. Someone's got it, right? <laughs> someone's got it. You know what I love? It's just like you have a. I don't care attitude, which is great. Like I'm doing this, I'm fun. I'm doing what I'm doing and you take it or leave it. And I've, I've learned to do that myself with getting out on these lives and do my messages and my bike ride. And so many people are afraid to, to get out there and be themselves, be yourself. Who cares what people exactly. think? They're going to love you. They're going to hate you. They're going to sick. They're going to have a comment for you to not be yourself, be real. People are going to connect to you and you would be real. And, and I've connected with you for being so real and that's awesome. So I thank you for that. So let's talk oh, on you. so phase two now of Llama Girl re recreated now. Um, so yes. after this experience now down at Stacy's event, I remember specifically that that breathing exercise was was pretty emotional for me. I remember for you, and I remember watching you in tears, and it was actually pretty awesome to watch you. Like you just saw like I saw it click for you. Like you were like, I got it. I know what I'm. I know where I need to be. It was just so cool. You were just like. Shh. Like you lit up, like you could see energy, like I saw you light up, like it's cool. So, um, and now you're on this journey now where, 
uh, I mean, social media. Tell us about social media. Why should we be on social media? What should we be doing on social media? Oh my what, gosh. What's a crash course in a, in social media for those so that don't know? Video. I mean, it all really does come down to video, mm. guys. Um, you know, you, we hear all the time TikToks, you know, growing all this, but it's true. Um, you know, I get most of my leads, most of my, you know, feedback and everything from TikTok, Reels, um, YouTube Shorts, things like that, because people have short in attention spans. Mm. They're not wanting to read the long posts anymore. They're not wanting to spend their time, you know, scrolling through Facebook, looking at posts. They're m moving towards that video platform. They're looking for the short seven to 15 second videos where they can get all the information and keep going on with their day, you know? It's crazy because most people spend an average of 51 minutes on TikTok or Reels when they're on. Like, mm. if you think about how much time they're spending there, why would you not want to be there, right? Totally. So, um, so for me, it's just my main focus for my clients and stuff is TikTok, Reels, Instagram. Um, I do the other social media management as well, but I always focus on getting my clients on video and then what we do is we make a group and we drive the traffic to that group and in the process they get the lead information they're able to pour the posts and stuff into that group and people are able to really grow their platforms hmm. so when i am helping someone you know really grow their social media the first thing i tell them is don't make it all about business yeah yes. you're going to mention it hmm. but don't make it a hundred percent about business 20, right? don't make it a transaction <laughs> we're yeah. here to create relationships with these people and some people find that so weird they're like um i don't want to spend time making relationships i'm like well then you shouldn't be in the people business yeah. <laughs> that's so important they, i mean i think that's why video is so important because People get to know, love, and trust you because they see your mannerisms, see the tone of your voice, they see, you know, your personality all through a video. It's like meeting someone in person. So once they see your video, like I know with a, with a real estate listing, people that follow me on social media, when I finally meet them, they feel like they already know me. Like it's it's yeah. it's cool. Like, you know, it's not just, oh, who are you? Like, oh, I know you and I saw that picture with your kids and I saw you doing that bike ride and you already have this common ground. Yeah. This relationship's already built, even though you really didn't know each other yet. And it's I think it's exactly. such a shortcut to meeting clients. You know, and building those it relationships. A hundred percent agree. I've had so many people reach out and be like, I didn't even have to tell them what I was doing. And they're like, hey, can you sign me up for your business? I was like, you have no idea what I'm doing. And they're like, oh, yeah, I do. I've seen all your TikToks. And I'm like, okay, I've sure, never met sure. you, but okay. Yeah. Like, it was that easy. And then I was able to get to know them through, like, the process. But, like, I've had those kind of interactions. And that comes from being who you are on social media, yes. too. Real. Not Real just being the fan. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, that's why I go by Mrs. Ron Real now as my tag um, a lot of times. Because the thing is, is that so many people want to be this perfect person on social media. They show only the perfectionist on social media, right? But what I have found is by being yourself and being real with people on, hey, my day suck today, but I'm going to dance this silly dance for you. And we're just going to have fun with it because this is how life really is. You know, or I show like my dog's destroyed something and people True. can relate yeah. to that. And I'm like, yep, my dogs were totally. buttheads today, but we survived, you know? Yeah. Those are the kind of things people are looking to watch. And then they're like, yeah, that social media girl, she has a real life. Like I can relate to her and I don't feel intimidated. So I wanna go see her, you know? And that goes with any business, right? Like you can do that literally with anything. All you have to do is be your raw and real self and show who you are to mm. the world. Well, I love it. I love it. It's uh, my dad told me years ago. We were family air conditioning business, and he said you can get air conditioner from anybody. Air conditioner is air conditioner. Yeah, some people may be a little cleaner install, whatever, maybe a little bit pricey. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, they leave. You got cold air in your house, right? It's air conditioning. People deal with people they want to deal with. The people that that you know that they can relate to that they're friendly with that they like to talk to um and i brought that into my real estate career i mean selling houses yeah there's tricks and you know some people are better at it than others but at the end of the day there's a lot of great realtors out in the world who do you deal with it's an intimate experience dealing you know i'm coming into your house 
I'm in your bedroom, I'm in your bathroom, I'm, you know, showing your house, this and that, you know, it's like pretty intimate, you know, I'm seeing, you know, whether you're living clean, whether you're living dirty, whatever, like skeletons in the closet, we open it, we see the skeletons, you know, so, uh, you know, <laughs> so, it's an inti- <laughs> yeah. so it's an intimate experience, so I think really, in a, especially in the real estate world, no love and trust is, you know, you want to, you want to know what I'm about, you want to know that I'm a regular person, I have regular struggles, and, um, you know, a lot of my social media is non-business related, it's just me being me. And exactly. that helps me, like, you know, everyone's like, well, you never talk about real estate. Well, I don't need to. I mean, people know I do real estate. It's like, I don't even know. It's, it's out there. You know what I do. But you relate. You get relatable to people and you get friends and you build up your network. And, um, you know, my network's so big. Whenever I meet someone new and I friend them on Facebook, now I, we always have mutual friends. Like, it's very rare that I'll meet someone new, complete strangers, and I'm going, oh, you're on Facebook? Oh, we got six mutual friends. Oh, how do you know so-and-so? How do you know that one? We went to school together. We worked together. We did that. That's how small the world is. And now once we connect, mm-hmm. um, I meet you. We, you know, we meet for two minutes. We're like, oh, you're on social media? Psh, boom. Now she's now whoever's a friend. Now every time you're seeing me in the morning doing my messages on the bike and this and that, and you're like, oh, you know what? He's a nice guy. Whatever. He's relatable. Or maybe he's an asshole and I don't like him, you know, but whatever. You know who I am, you know, and it's, it's really important, I think, for those videos to get out there. I think a lot of your success is... The whole world knows who you are. There's no doubt. We know who Caitlin is. I mean, it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, and it's relatable and it's silly and it's fun. And it's, it's just, you know, I don't watch TV anymore. I watch reels. Like literally if I got time before bed and I would have maybe in the past, maybe watch a little bit of TV. I flip on my phone, flip on through reels and TikTok and silly stuff. And the entertaining stuff is if you make me laugh, I'm going to keep watching you. I'm going to see what else you got. You know, it's, uh, it's that simple. Yeah. And it's just like watching a TV show, right? It's, you watch the shows that are entertaining and then you get the commercial. So you watch the content, watch the content, get entertained, commercial. Watch the content, watch the commercial. And it's like, exactly. if it's all commercials, right? How many people we see on social media that their whole social media is commercial? And you're like, yeah, unfollow. You're not interesting. Like, Yeah. Like, you know. That's like where it comes down to the E3M3 method, yes. right? Because like you have the entertaining, the, you know, emotional revoking or the, you know, like, more event kind of stuff you know you you get more into that kind of um material so for me you know i focus a lot on the entertaining or the uh, emotional you know and sometimes they're attached to more marketing but you don't really realize it's happening (laughs) and so it you know or it you do and you're like man this is why i need social media (laughs) you know or man this girl is like everywhere and she did it without having to spend a dime like how do i do that you know social media is free like it's free. it's a free resource to reach thousands of people like why wouldn't you be on social media i just like some people like oh i don't do so i don't do facebook well you're crazy because that's a free advertisement right there that you're throwing away you know it's uh I was like, no problem, yeah. I'll do it. I'll, I'll take all the business. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm not I, I love the people know? that like... approach me and say, oh, I don't do video. I'm uncomfortable in front of the camera. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I know someone that can help you with that. You know, yeah. like, you know, yeah. people in Apex and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't so think any I, of us are comfortable I, in front of the camera. You just get used to it. Exactly. You know, it's like you exactly. push yourself. You know? Like, you know, but really it comes down to you do two uncomfortable things a day. That's literally how I started doing lives on social mm-hmm. media. Is I was like, I was terrified and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to force myself to do two uncomfortable things a day. And one of those is going to be a live on Facebook. Yeah. Is it still uncomfortable? Absolutely. Yeah. But not nearly as uncomfortable as it was the first time. Yeah. And so it just takes, you know, going and doing it anyway. Right. Yeah. And so it's just the consistent effort. Choose your heart, as they say, right? It's it's uncomfortable to uh, get on social media. It's uncomfortable to not get the leads and be broke. <laughs> what do you want yep, to do, exactly. right? Exactly. And, and it's, it's, you know, it's an enjoyable experience too. So there's, there's a side effect of, of an advertising marketing component to all of us. We're marketing ourselves as a human. That's what a lot of people don't realize, I think, is that we're marketing us, not not our business, yeah. not our, what we do. We, I'm Brian, you're Caitlin, you, you like us. Now, once you like us, now you say, you know what? Down the road, I got to buy or sell a house, you're going to use me. Down the road, I need someone to help me with social media, you're going to use you. But they're, exactly. they're buying you first. They're buying your personality, your, your your person as a human. They don't care. I can do 10 other jobs and probably, you know, if, once they love me, they do 10 other jobs with me. You know, it's like mm-hmm. um, people don't realize that you're selling yourself. So you need to be yourself. You know, you're yeah, not you're not exactly. an advertisement. You are you, you know, especially in sales where people, like I said, you're literally person to person, hand to hand combat. It's like, you know, 
It's not that that picture you put out of you know of that pretty sunset that says I sell real estate. No one cares. The picture on the bus stop I left is. I mean, there's so many realtors on bus stops. I don't get it. Like, do I really go sit at the bus stop and go? Well, I'm gonna sell my house. Let me use that person. Like, no. Like, this is the biggest and best of my life. You're in my, you're in my bedroom. You're in my bathroom. You're in all this other stuff. I'm gonna hire someone off the bus stop. Like, I just don't get the whole concept of it. It's such a yeah. cold marketing that it just I don't know. Like, I don't know. I just every time I drive past a bus stop, I'm like, really? I'm like, do you really get any business off of that? I don't know. Maybe yeah. I'm missing something. <laughs> But yeah. uh, I'll stick to the live but, uh, making relationships, you know, like I call my real estate relationships, uh, real estate built on relationships because of, you know, I've, I started real estate, it's actually five years ago, like literally today, I think I got my license. Um, that's awesome. So it's five years to date. Um, we did, I think 26 million in sales last year. Um, we're, I'm already about halfway there this year already. Um, wow. It's growing every year. It's doubling every year. And why? Relationships. I, I know a ton of people. I help them. I do the exactly. best I can. I don't worry about the money. I worry about helping people. The money comes second. Um, yep. I try and get everyone the best deal they can get, the best situation they can get. And at the end of the day, whatever I get paid, I get paid. Um, as long as I know I'm helping people to first, and then whatever I get paid is what I get paid, and, and it pays. You know? And then I've also brought uh, about a dozen agents into, into the market that were brand new people that were looking to make a side income, and they came on my team. And I've been training them and coaching them, and they're starting to make money now, which is really cool to see, you know, see your 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 people grow and see your people excel, and 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 yeah. it's it's life changing, you know, to start you know as a side income for a lot of people to, you know, sell a house a month and make it you know a couple extra grand a month. That's it's game changer for people, and it's it's really cool to be it changing is. lives like that, you know, really, it's it's fulfilling, you know, so and. You know, of course, I agree. it's uh, it's you know, of course, obviously, it helps it helps my bottom line too. But it's more it's more watching them grow and watching them you know grow their wings and take off and and I watch them doing stuff I've taught them. It's like yes, they paid attention. <laughs> it's so cool. True. It's so True. cool. It's like you know. Oh my gosh, they listen. They listen. Yeah, look at it worked. See, I do know what I'm doing. <laughs> it's funny. Yes. Oh my gosh. Right. Like... How cool is that when you see someone doing like what you told what you taught them and they're doing it and it's working. You're like. Yes. <laughs> so I took someone to the Woman of Apex event as her first um, entrepreneur event. One oh, of my wow. um, I was people there. that obviously I wasn't there because uh, they, they, um, they didn't like how was yeah, that event. There, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, she literally to see her light up after I told her stuff, you know, that I've experienced, and for her to see it herself and go. <gasps> that yeah. light to go off was amazing. Like I was like, yes, yeah. like it was, and then just talking that evening it through and like her aspirations, like her goals and stuff. It was just so much more fulfilling than me going, right? Like I yeah. got a ton out of it, but to see that light go off in her eyes was That's just neat. the most magical experience. And I can't wait to see where we go with it. So, um, but yeah, yeah, I get exactly what you're saying. Yeah, the exact, uh, my agent Dawn came on. She's, probably two and a half years in now with her license and she joined apex um she joined entourage i guess when they had that special at the end of the year you know, the year-end discount thing whatever they did and she yeah. joined and now she's involved and she watched what she watched me changing watch what i was talking about and i basically take what i learned at apex and i teach it to the team and yeah. uh, so my weekly coaching calls are basically everything we learn in apex and i just kind of pass it down the line right that's what teaching is right person passing knowledge to knowledge right to the next person yep and um she joined and I just watch her like, now she's posting long posts and all kinds of stuff on social media and all kinds of, and I'm like, her social media game stepped up and I'm like, wow, like, see, like everything I've been telling you, it works, right? And it's just so cool to see. It's it's really, uh, and then she's killing it. I mean, she's just selling a ton of houses. So as a part-time, you know, cool. you know, it's uh, she's a mom of two kids. She runs purchasing for a hospital and she sold 14 houses last year. I mean, wow. like, like you know what's your excuse you know we call it time you know forget your excuses i keep it g-rated um you know exactly. everyone says oh i don't have time i don't you just don't want it if you don't have time. <coughs> oh bless you mm -hmm. you know if you don't have time you don't want it that just means you don't want it bad enough exactly you, know, you, know, you find exactly. the time right there's you know? always time for the yeah. things that matter right you know you want to you want to go out on friday night and and go hang out with your friends you know you have time for that but you don't have the time for whatever it is you need to do for your business you know so it just it means you don't want it yep. Yeah, it's exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Exactly. So. When you find that purpose or, you know, the thing that drives you, 
you're willing to work late into the night, get up early, do whatever it takes and, you know, uh, do it all over again. Like if anything, it's funny. My husband calls me a workaholic (laughs) (laughs) and, um, uh, you know, now he's getting involved and it's, (laughs) it's really funny funny because his posts (laughs) crack me up because if you like go into the social media pros group I made, he does a post a day and they're always memes and he always introduces himself as hey party people <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I'm, like, I'm like oh my gosh i need to teach you things <laughs> it's great it, it lightens my day though like i just it's love cool seeing see him, it though like you know, when they, yeah, putting they... in his effort right yeah. because like social media isn't his thing like he has not like been on facebook in three years <laughs> so it's like to see him Doing that effort because he sees what it's doing for me mm. is like amazing. What does your husband do? What's his uh So right now he works as a manufacturer um in Amway's plant. Okay. Um, but the goal is to get him out of that job when mm-hmm. we move to Dallas in August. Moving to Dallas too. Everyone's moving to Dallas. I want to move to Dallas too. That's where all the cool people yep. are going. <laughs> yep, that's where we're going. I thought about that. Um, like, maybe our like lease it. ends yeah. August second, and uh, we we're going to be looking at houses and stuff uh, when we go down for MDM. Very so cool. I'm excited. Very cool. Awesome. Awesome. So many people are going. Josh Wright just went down there. Everybody's going. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's cool. That's cool. So and then now you work with Iconic. So tell us about the Iconic experience with our brother Chris Whitehead. <laughs> Love him. Oh, yeah. So um, it's still very early in the stages and stuff. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just really working alongside him and many others. It's just so enlightening. And we have so many exciting things that are going to be coming down the line that I'm just like getting super pumped about. I can't wait till we can actually talk about it. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, there's just so many exciting things coming down the line that um, are going to be a game changer for sure. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's really watching the whole everything evolve. Just Apex since I've joined. It's a year coming up on, you know, it's May 1st, I think is when I joined. So coming up on a year, and just watching how much Apex has grown and then watching Iconic grow. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's just, and it's, you know what's cool is that it's almost like, a, we call it the cult, right? The culture. The culture of like-minded people <laughs> coming together, and then what my Facebook feed is now. I mean, I got three thousand friends. I had a bunch before that. Now since Apex, I'm over three thousand friends, and my feed all day long is just inspiration and people winning and people mm-hmm. killing it, and it just makes you want to do better, makes you want to be a better person. There's no people complaining. There's no none of that stuff goes up in my feed anymore. And it's just so cool exactly to that like anyone you talk to that becomes part of this group you can have a conversation with them and say yes yes we're on the same page it's uh it's said it's almost like this this team that's growing that we're all gonna take over the world you know that's what i feel like like oh absolutely we're the ones that are gonna yes. change the world this group is growing so fast and it, and the amount of awesome people that are in it that really want to change the world we really want to you know we've had fed up and sick and tired of of being sick and tired and uh you really just want to do better you know from from business to to life to you know like I said as ryan talks about picking up the garbage pushing in your chair putting away the shopping cart you know just living a better life you know represent yep. what winning looks like all the time that, that rings in my head all the time it's like does this represent winning it does. you know like what i'm doing right now does this represent winning no okay stop doing it you know and when you live your life with that mindset that we need to be winning all the time we need to show the world what winning looks like and what it and set the example for everyone else to follow and if each one for of sure. us does that it fire starts fire it grows you know it's uh That's... it's it's pretty cool you know i've kind of coined that that expression because i really i really feel it you know stuff i've done there's so many people that are out there riding their bike walking running you know all kinds of stuff because of my message every day what i'm doing with this um we're almost done with the uh journey or 329 today at the 365 so we're wow. we're in the finish line now 10 miles plus a day and uh I don't know if I'm going to keep going. I don't know. I was like, you keep going. It's not, I don't know. My legs want to break, but, um, <laughs> it's, uh, this time of year, it's great. So like this time of year, I love riding because it's, you know, the weather's starting to break and the winter months were, it's the winter. Uh, it was rough. Uh. It was, I was riding in the snow. It was 20 degrees out wind blowing. And, you know, I come back from a ride and just be raw, like literally real and raw. Like, it was real and raw. Like, you know, wind burn not like, all day way. long, not in a good way. Yeah. So that <laughs> part was done. So I, I, I got to figure out what I want to do with it going forward. I think I might keep doing a message of the day, though, because I think that's uh, important to just try and... I've had so many yeah. people connect with me that 
I needed to hear that today. Thank you for sharing that, you know, type stuff. And it's just, just when I think no one's There's listening. There's always to something it. to say. There's, yeah, you know, yeah. that sure. that's like my favorite complaint to get from people. Like when I'm managing their group and they have to post a day once a day, they're like, how do you come up with content to post once a day? I'm like, look, I manage like 10 accounts that I have to come up with content for. If I can do that, you can post once a day. <laughs> like, you know. Well, you know, it comes down to but, storytelling. Well, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and a lot of times the messages will, will align. Like, I'll hear three different podcasts, and the message, for some reason, is just the way the world works. The message has a similar mm-hmm. content. Like, what, what, you know, three random podcasts are all talking about the same thing. I'm like, all right, there's my topic of the day. Sometimes yep. it's, a, it's an experience. We talk about storytelling, right? You know, E3. Um, it was funny today. Uh, one of my clients is a Catholic priest. He's 84 years old. Um, smart as could be, you know, lots of life experience. And we sat and talked for an hour today in his living room. And uh, he's like, oh, you want to sit That's and chat? So cool. and, just, and just like talking to his experiences and that. And we were talking about that. The E3 method is really the gospel of church, right? They read an excerpt from the Bible, which is a story, right? And you're extracting the lesson and you're educating, right? So you're, you're entertaining with the, the, the story. So they read in the Bible verse. And it's telling a story. They talk about the, the, the lesson that was in there and what we can learn from that. And that's, this has been going on for years and years and years. And now we're just taking it to social media now. It's like people are going to church every Sunday and learning. This is how they learn. And you learn from stories. You know, if someone tells you yeah. to do something, you forget about it. But if someone tells you a story that's relatable, now it sticks with you. And now you don't forget it. And it's you know, exactly. he told me 84 years. He says, like, there's people from 30 years ago will talk up. I remember in church you said this story about this, that, and the other thing, and you know it's been in my head for the last thirty years. He's like, "Wow, like that's cool, like that, you know, you've inspired people, you know, and told them the stories and whatnot." So uh, it was just neat to have this conversation with him. He's like, uh, "Then we talked about relationship building," and he said, um, "Back in the day, Jesus, when he healed people, he didn't just walk up and heal people. He started talking to them, make sure they had faith, and built a relationship with them. And once they had a relationship where they were faithful and followers." Then he would heal them. He said, so that no love and trust building relationships really is biblical of back in the day, like when Jesus was healing people, if you really want to parallel it to, and I'm like, I never thought of that, but it, yeah, you're right. Like, you know, he would, yeah. you know, it was like, and go giving, right? Jesus was a go giver, right? <laughs> you know, so yeah. uh, what there we're doing now is biblical, you know, so E3, <laughs> M3, go giving, uh, Storytelling, it's just, uh, it's neat to, to have a conversation like that with someone that really knows the uh, the scripture and stuff. It's like, this is what, what everything I was telling him is like, this is going on for hundreds of years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, it's cool. pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's kind of, uh, gave me chills sitting there talking to him, like just like all the different stories he was telling. I'm like, this is neat. You know, it's, uh, you know, but storytelling is where it's at. And that's, that's video. That's long post. That's, you know. Share the journey. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, what else? So, best-selling author. Uh, what was your book about? Tell us about your book. It is actually my journey. It's from when I was born to here now. Um, awesome. It is, you know, basically the story of, you know, my mindset of how I literally lived <laughs> many years lying to myself and others you know hiding who i truly was hiding my you know worth hiding everything to please others and to you know just because i you know felt from the time after an incident when i was six i felt that i wasn't as worthy or uh important as the rest of my five siblings and so that really started my issues And, um, I actually like it, it messed me. I made choices to based on that, to hide when I was having a rough day and stuff, I was the happy go lucky kid and stuff, Mm. you know, I bottled it all in. And then when that bottle broke, it broke, it was gone. Um, but you know, it basically is takes you on the journey from, you know, where I started to becoming the llama girl, my relationship with my llama, um, you know, it takes you through the whole journey. And um, it's been amazing since it's been out. I've had so many people come up to me and be like, your book changed my life, or I finished your book in two hours. And 
I just could not put it down. And, uh, you know, things like that. And that's a feeling that no one can take away from me. That's cool. So that's, that's cool. been amazing. Yeah, it's still on my uh, reading list. I haven't gotten it yet. It's a problem with Apex. Everyone freaking writes a book, and it's like, there's only so much time in a day. <laughs> I get the yeah. stack going. One by one, we get through them. We get through them. But um, so what's the name of your book? <laughs> you can find it on Amazon. What? Uh... Yep, you can find it on Amazon. It is called Unmasking the Greatness Within. Nice. Uh, the story of the llama girl. Love it, love so it, it. that is where it's at. Um, you know, it's uh, like a teal color. It's yeah, it's definitely was a perfect first book because um, I got to leave it all there. And now I get to, you know, write my new chapter. So it's exciting. That's important. Right? We, we learned that in uh, Stacey's event about, about writing, <coughs> um, writing out your emotions. Like uh, we did an exercise where we kind of forgave ourselves, and I actually just found that letter recently that we wrote down in Tampa, and I was like, wow, like that was a moving experience to just literally write it out. And once you write it and put it in word, that it's almost released, right? It's like it's a way to release stuff. So, yep. so as advice to those watching, uh, if you got something you're carrying around, just start writing, write it out, just just Good. talk it out, write it out, and it's almost like once you put it in writing, you can. Put it in an envelope, you can put it in a drawer, you can throw it away, you can burn it. But it, like it's a release that you get out of it. Um, and you, it's hard to explain it until you try it. So just, if you're dealing with something, it's almost like journaling or whatever, write it down. Just write. Write it all down. Get it out. You know, it's like talking to someone. Maybe you don't want to talk to someone. Talk to the paper. And um, that was an exercise that we did with Stacy that um, really... Um, who did that? That was uh, Michelle that made us do that, right? Yeah, yeah. Michelle Fuller. Yeah. That Michelle Fuller, exercise yeah. was very powerful. Yeah. I, I kept my letter as well, and um, I look back at it once in a while, and I see myself, you know, going into old habits. I'm like, yeah. eh, wait a second. Go read that letter. Yeah. Yeah. You forgave yourself of this. Don't even go there, yeah. girl. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, it, it definitely is powerful. Yeah, no, it's uh, we carry a lot around. Um, I'm not sure the other day was the three Gs. It was um, carrying on guilt. We're guilty for stuff, um, you know, that we carried around. Um, grief, we carry around grief from stuff that, you know, failed or lost or whatever. Um, and grudges, that we hold mm -hmm. grudges against people that have hurt us and done us wrong. And we have headspace used up that basically means nothing. Like, you know, oh, yeah. I'm going to get that person back. Who cares? Gone. Done. Yeah. They forgot about you. Like... You know, you know, you're holding that grudge. Oh, I'm gonna get that person whenever I can. No, like forgive and forget, release it. Um, you, you gotta know, let go. You know, the, the the guilt and the grief. You gotta release it. You gotta, you know, releasing is something that's become important in my life through the Apex community, through a lot of Stacy stuff. Is that, you know, forgiving yourself, forgiving people around you, and releasing the hurt, releasing the pain, releasing the guilt, releasing the grudges, and freeing because those anchors that you're dragging, they're all anchors that drag you that keep you from going forward. And once yeah. you can release that and clear the air and, and start with a clean slate and write it down and, and get it out, it's just like it's so freeing. It's like it's like literally it's, uh, you know, it feels like a weight came off your chest. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Exactly. It's, uh, so, exactly. Yeah, so I'm sure that's all. Uh, you know, mindset stuff is um, a lot of what, what we do is, you know, in our apex world is, you know, it's mind over matter. You know, it's um, you yeah. know, never give up, you know. Forget your excuses, FYE is, uh, that's a big one for me. You know, there you go. You know, we got the bullet. Tattooed on my wrist. It's, the uh, funny part is, I got that tattooed before I joined Apex. Really? Yep. Um, Lori and uh, Devin had it on their wrists, and I loved the message. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, I need that. And uh, so I might have got a tattoo one night and <laughs> showed up at work with it. <laughs> um and uh i had no idea it was apex related till they told me so oh, that that's was cool fun. that's cool yeah it's just like meant to be you know it's a, and what do we do right we make excuses for everything in our life you know i'm tired i'm hungry i'm whatever i'm this i'm that you know i don't have the talent and you know we, we learned that talk you can talk yourself out of stuff you can talk yourself into stuff you know if you say yeah. i can't you can't if you say you can there's a good chance you can but you know once you condemn it and say i can't you're never going to and, um, exactly you know and have to have faith and have the um i've been talking a lot about dreams lately and follow pastor rick on um he's got a podcast and he's got a whole series now on dreams saying that we're all the same except some of us follow our dreams and some of us don't 
some of exactly. us some of us have a dream and we have the faith that we can do it and we believe in ourselves and we do it and some of us have the dream and we don't think we can do it and we forget it and we just stay with the force of average and that's why some people are average and some people are excellent because they follow their dreams they've had faith and they follow their dreams and if you think about it really there's a lot of truth to that right what everything in life started with someone's dream and that they follow mm-hmm. through on and not following through on those dreams is really the 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 difference between you know people the people that follow their dreams and people that didn't follow their dream and, yeah uh, and then pain without purpose so if you have a dream you'll endure all kinds of pain to get to the finish line to get to your dream but if you don't have a dream and you're just existing and then you have pain it's pain without purpose it's a lot of pain that makes you want to possibly think about ending it all and you know when you don't know yeah. your purpose that's where things like suicide show up because it is. pain without purpose you're in a lot of pain and you don't have any reason you have no direction of where you're going you have no reason you know like, where's the light at the end of the tunnel so you don't see the light of the tunnel so you're like all right well i don't see the light so i'm checking out and uh that's why it's so important to have those dreams and to figure out your purpose and to follow that i agree uh, you know i attribute a lot of my you know um, cutting in my early years and my overeating to me trying to soothe that pain. You know, it was just me going after that pain and, you know, doing whatever I could to soothe it without, you know, going to that last level because I grew up Catholic. Right. And as yep, Catholics, here, you're yeah. told, yeah. you know, you're told basically, uh, you know, uh, if you end your life, you're going like that's what i was told right you go down there and so i was terrified of going to hell more than i was terrified of death and um, and uh so i was you you try to soothe those pains in so many different ways whereas if i had just taken a second to ask myself okay what am i working towards you know and really take that moment to think about you know what's why am i alive and why am i what is my purpose you know um there's so many people that could save from going down the wrong paths, you know, whatever it is. Um, and unfortunately no one tells them difference. So they don't know. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't understand your purpose and then you said that there's why, why you're doing this, why am I existing? I think maybe it's a lot of people, why they get in this existence mode, the hamster in the wheel, you know, the hamster in the wheel syndrome is a real thing. You're going round and round and round and round and, Every day is like Groundhog Day, and it's just, there's no purpose, there's no drive, there's no reason to get off the hamster wheel. And once you figure yep. out that purpose, it's like, all right, now it's, let's get off this hamster wheel, and let's start moving forward rather than going in circles. And yeah, that's a, exactly. I think that's a critical point that a lot of us hit. I know I hit that point. Uh, COVID was probably part of it. You know, I was just, you know, I was going to work to the office every day, um, doing the seven to five every day, like. And just going to the hamster wheel every day was the same. Sitting at a computer all day long. I'm like, and then COVID mm-hmm. happened, and I wasn't going to the office. And then I was still able to sell real estate during COVID. And I'm like, real estate, you know, it's it's, you know, it's nice because I go to people's houses, I go show them different houses. It's, you know, I'm not sitting at a computer. I'm meeting new people. I'm out and, you know, whatever. We're out, you know, all right, I got a two hours to kill. I'm gonna go to the boardwalk and go go down to the beach for a little while while I'm waiting for the next showing and stuff. You know, or you know, yeah, there's calls you got to make and work you got to do but it's definitely a lot freer than sitting at a computer from seven to five you know five days a week six days a week and for uh, sure you know i was kind of lost in my purpose at that point because i was like i don't want to do this anymore like i was just like you know i don't want to get out of bed and go to the office again and and then once i started selling real estate and you're you're changing people's lives now it's like wow this is awesome like i love it like it's so much fun to connect with people and to sell their houses and to get offers you know eighty five thousand over asking price on a recent house i'm like holy cow and then the people love you you listed the house and you thought you were gonna get a number and it, it bit up like crazy and now like psh, they thought you were awesome to start now like you're like the king you know this is cool <laughs> i like being king you know <laughs> it's fun and uh it's just really 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 fun to uh to find your purpose and to like I said, a lot of it's helping people and then you know the same as you when i found started doing this message with this bike ride um i was kind of doing a message mike claudio really inspired me to do it when he was going live he said um i forget who it was he got that from someone else um anyway mike mike said someone else did it for 365 live messages every day and it was like game changer for them and their reach out and social media and that so mike had started it i was like you know i kind of like that i'm gonna do it as part of my bike ride and then i'm 
Yeah, Mike stopped doing it, so I said, I got one up on Mike. Mike's got one up on a lot of stuff on me, but I got one up on his live videos. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I got one thing on Mike Claudio. He's a beast. But, um, yeah, so, um, but it's, when I was first doing the messages, they didn't really have much purpose. Like, you know, they were just, I was just kind of talking about whatever, saying hello to people. And then I kind of started digging in and getting a little vulnerable and stuff. I've cried in some of my videos that just hit me right. And those are the videos that literally have had all kinds of people interact with, reach out, you know, connect with. It's just the realer and rawer that you get, the real, the more people relate and connect. And um, it makes me try and be better. It makes me try and be more relatable. Um, exactly. You know, sometimes, like I said, you're, you're reaching for content and you're kind of like, all right, what am I going to talk about today? And, you know, you're trying to come up with an idea and a concept and it just goes. And sometimes I think they're crappy and then I listen to them back. I'm like, oh, actually, it was pretty good. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I the have that yeah. The social media, that's the worst thing. A lot of people, oh, that, that was bad. You know, a couple of times when I got that message, it was bad. It was off. And then I read it back, I'm like, actually, no, it was pretty good, actually. You know? So it's, and that's, you know, all the self doubt that we all carry, right? Like, you know, mm -hmm. you just got to do it. Just do it. Just be yourself yep. and do it. That's the best advice. And I know that's what you do. That's what I do. You know, yeah, I've heard you know comments of who's this guy think he is he's live on there giving messages whatever you don't like it don't watch i don't care there's a lot of people i'm helping like you know like i actually now it's funny like i ride my bike through town and people are beeping and waving and stuff and like like you know acquaintances like strangerish people you know people from the neighborhood and stuff like that not their friends and someone beeps and i'm looking I'm like what the hell is that you know and like hey keep going right you know we ride at dawn you know it's fun so uh you don't That's realize awesome. how many people are watching you like that's you know true and how many people are struggling and looking for something to latch onto? um you know yeah. we, we all put a smile on and you had a smile on your face i had a smile on my face i was a mess behind the scenes there's still days when i'm a mess behind the scenes and i'm sure it's the same for you you're out there oh, doing you know just because we have a smile on our face doesn't mean we got our shit together i mean it's uh you know, it's yesterday a, yeah. prime example so i have strep throat right now <laughs> awesome <laughs> and um the yesterday i just wanted to like crawl in bed and like lay there and i was like oh my gosh i have to do the work yeah. <laughs> you know and i was like to crying to my husband i was like honey i don't want to do the work and he's like what does ryan say I was like, Fuck my excuses <laughs> oh, <Ryan. laughs> gosh darn it why did i take you to an apex event yes 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 <laughs> it's true though it's true though it's you know it's it's really it's really real you know like i said and, and i think it's part of the you know it's a lot of rainbows and unicorns on social media and, you know so everyone mm -hmm. everyone's living the best life Woo! everyone's on vacation all the time everyone's got the new car everyone's no one shows the bad you know and i think when you when you when you show the good and the bad and then you show that you're a real person and it's not rainbows and unicorns and you're not alone. It's uh, that's what I think we're really when you start connecting to people and start influencing mm -hmm. people and helping people. Um, exactly. That's, that's the game changer. You know, don't talk about the good and the bad. Don't just talk about the rainbows and unicorns. Don't be fake book. You know, fake book is so fake book. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. We don't do. Fake we don't do here. fake book. Yeah. This is this is for real. You know. So. Uh, all right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We're coming up on uh, almost an hour here, which oh, wow. went, went like nothing. Of course. For real. <laughs> <laughs> right so um so where can everyone find you where uh where everywhere <laughs> everywhere everywhere but, what uh, what's your um, handles now let me see uh so i am on facebook caitlin young i'm on instagram caitlin young twitter caitlin young um linkedin caitlin young uh, my website is socialmediadoctorllc.com like and that's for my uh social media um if you want to talk about anything else just message me facebook messenger um yeah that's the best way to get a hold of me so how does your social media work so if i'm a newbie to business and i want to get a social media campaign going do you start from scratch do you man maintain it do you coach on it how, how what is your uh... whatever they are looking for so okay. i do customized social media um so if they are like hey we have something that's working we just need you to maintain it do that awesome. um so if they're like i have no idea what i'm doing i don't even have a facebook account i've had that happen um <laughs> i you know set it up for them show them how to optimize it you know so that way they get most engagement i you know coach them how to post and stuff i walk them through how to do that um i have a social media group that actually i post to daily that 
is like helping people like there's no gimmicks or anything we don't pitch in that group it's just a group to give back to people to help them grow their social media like and that's called the social media pros um i don't think i'm in that group i have to that. find it yeah yeah um and that i have about 100 members in there right now and we just uh add value i bring apex people in all the time to speak in it nice, um, nice. like um, last week I had Steve Gamlin in. I love he him. Did, yeah, uh, he's the best. Vision boards. Yeah. Um, I've had Kyle Reed in. I've had yes, Andrew Carlson. Oh. I've had Philip Sessions. That's all my so boys. I, I, <laughs> yeah. So I just bring them all in, you know, and um, I'm working on getting Gerby in. <laughs> <laughs> the um, meme lord. So, yep. Going to get him to do something on memes. I, it's going to happen. Um, just working on a date. <laughs> I like and it. then, I like uh, you know, we have, I'm going to reach out to some more people. I do it based on what people need um, and figure out from there. I've done stuff on TikTok to help people grow. But, yeah, it's just a place that we can all help each other do better at social media. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. I mean, obviously, you got entry-level packages all the way up into full-scale, you know, corporate packages and oh, stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So that's awesome. Absolutely. So definitely connect with Caitlin if your social media game doesn't exist or isn't is in what it should be. Uh, we probably do evaluations. Or if you're too busy for it. Yeah, yeah, if you're too like, busy for it, maintaining it. It is a huge uh, time suck. It really busy. is. I do my own social media for most. Well, my VA does a lot of my reposts and stuff on my videos, and I got her doing a lot of posting for like the real estate stuff. Like she'll make the flyers and post for that. And that's really saved me a lot of time, because uh, you know I was doing all my own stunts for a while, but uh, it kind of helps to push some of it out. It's you know you spend a lot of time making flyers and cropping and cutting and adding words and then posting it and tagging it and tags alone like you know if we, you know trying to get the right tags in and stuff like that it's it's a process yeah, and it's a science to it obviously you know i'm sure you're a lot better than i am i've learned i learned by accident i used to run um we have a non-profit community forum here in our town and i'm on on the board of directors for and i was running a social media for it and i had no idea what i was doing but i you know trial and error this worked this post got a lot of engagement let's do another one like it this one got a lot of engagement let's do another one on it and um i grew that page to a couple thousand followers which was pretty cool being i had no idea what i was doing but it taught me a lot you know i figured out yep. that you know pretty sunsets and pictures get a lot of engagement you know and then you know the the other stuff doesn't so much so give them what they want you know yep exactly you figure out what niche um the niche likes and stuff like that and um you know and you figure out uh with hashtags because i use different hashtag generators and websites to figure out what's trending each day because the hashtags change each day yeah <laughs> so that's that's a whole other <laughs> hour <laughs> so i, I kind of keep my hashtags real estate related but i probably should be looking at more of what's trending than what than what well now. there's trending real estate hashtags yeah. that's the thing is that what I do, I don't just put whatever. I like look at the niche and then I figure out what's trending in that um, certain niche. Like, it's crazy. It's like, you know, I did one for a landscaper and I added it landscapers, like an S, and it did better because I added oh, the S. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Whatever's, whatever's popular at that point. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Um, you, you do classes on social media that's is that something you're doing yet on like a group coaching and yep. stuff like that um so i i am working on building it but for now i'm doing it for free in that social media group so we're gonna get in that group so it's uh social media pros is it was it yep social the media social pros. media pros the social media pros all right awesome well, i'm definitely yep. jumping into that group right as we get off of here because i love <laughs> i love social yep. media like i said I've, I've been doing it for a couple of years and i'm self-taught and self-trained and i try and pick up tips along the way and i try and share whatever tips i learned at work reels are huge right now i just did um i was at the eagles concert on uh was it saturday night saturday night, mm -hmm. Friday, whatever it was and um so i was doing reels so i was i was going live and like you know the, them playing so i would do a clip of live all the time my reels are thousand two thousand it doesn't have to be like anything good it's just the fact that it's a reel that people are seeing it you know yeah so. yeah Literally. Reels are uh, huge right now. Definitely something I'm pushing. Um, like my clients are getting like three, four thousand on some of theirs wow. just because of um, the push there. Um, TikTok's a lot pickier. Um, you have to be consistent with that. Uh, they like two videos a day, <laughs> two yeah. videos a day on TikTok, and um, then from there, you know, it's the consistent TikTok wants to see that you're going to post daily, and then they'll push you. 
They're not uh, going to push you right away unless you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, I got an account. I've done a couple, you know, silly videos with the kids and stuff like that. I got one of me riding a, uh, riding a uh, go-kart down the street to uh, vanilla, vanilla Ice. It's actually pretty funny. That one got some good views. I mean, giant me and a little tiny go-kart driving down the block. Oh, my gosh. That's plus, good. Plus I mean, that, that, that is real worthy. Yeah, you That's... need, like, silly stuff, like, you know, entertaining stuff, you know. So, uh, mm -hmm. but, um, all right, awesome. So, we will let you go. You got uh, you to get some sleep, get rid of that strep throat you got there, and get your work done. But I appreciate you I'll for coming on. I'll get sleep in six hours. We're good. <laughs> Plenty of sleep when we're done, right? right? <laughs> well, thank you for having me Thank on. you for coming on. This was it. awesome. I love hearing your story. Um, you're doing awesome. Love love seeing your you. social media, and I uh, appreciate you. And we will be seeing you in Texas real soon. Oh, yeah. I'll see you at the entrepreneur meetup, right? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I'm doing entrepreneurs because MDM's two weeks after, and I'm just, like, running out of, I know, I know. And My first entrepreneur meetup, and you're not even going to be there. And Stacy's event is a week before. Like, I know. I'm going to miss that because of my brother's wedding. I know. But. That's too much. I've, I've run yeah. myself a little ragged. I'm, I kind of said I'm going to skip those two, and I'm going to go straight to uh, MDM because MDM's going to be nuts. Yep. So. All right. Well, all right. Sounds good. There. So, um, all, all right. right. I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on. And uh, well, we lost internet for a second there. Yeah. All right. So everyone have a good night. Remember, fire starts fire. Let's go start inspiring people out in the world. Go out there, be yourself, get real, get on the internet, and show people what winning looks like. Hi, everyone. Appreciate you. Thank you, Caitlin, for coming on, and have a great night.